Okay, there's the tube that's filled, and I think you can see the crack that occurred. Um, I'll get it to focus. And it occurred at one of the uh, filament pins, uh, right to the pin. Um, the solder at one point had leaked out. I attempted to resolder it. Probably didn't do a very good job. The uh, code date on the tube is uh, 1977, 15th week, so 15, right where the uh, lamp is lighting it up. So 7715 is the uh, is the code date. So the tube lasted 47 years, despite uh, a lousy repair on my part. So that's why the tube failed. Um, it was still doing full output uh, after 47 years of service. Um, I have the matching tube, which I'm going to give to a friend. It still does uh, full output. So that's um, why that tube failed. Okay, so here's my Drake L4B amplifier. Uh, it's set at 2500 volts. The load control is at zero. I'm going to move it up a tad. Uh, now I am transmitting into the amp, but I forgot to engage it. So turning it on now and tuning for max out, uh, which occurs with a fairly uh, minimal load control. And now that was about 10 watts. I'm going to up the drive to about 25 watts or so. And then keep one eye on the grid current meter and the other eye on a bird watt meter that's sitting to my right. So um, I've increased the drive, the load control is going to come up, and I'm tuning for max out, and I've pegged the meter at 300 watts, so I've increased the meter to uh, 3kW. Um, play current here is, uh, what is it, a couple hundred mils? Play current here is uh, important to look at also the grid current I don't want to exceed the grid current rating of the tubes because it will flat flatten the tubes um, so I'm increasing the uh, load control a tad going to key the amp again with uh, drive in the FM mode so I have a solid carrier and um, adjust the uh, the plate tune and plate load control I uh, should say load control for maximum output that's what I'm looking at is maximum output I am always going to check the grid current to make sure there's about a three and a half or four to one ratio of uh, grid current to uh, plate current so I'm upping the drive just a bit And again, the goal here is to tune for max out. So I've upped the drive uh, to uh, 30 or 40 watts, keying the amp, and uh, going to tune for max output, which will occur with a higher load control. And I know that just based upon experience, it's going to take a, lar a higher uh, loading number to make it work. So again, going to tune for max out and then check the grid current. At some point, the uh, amount of uh, uh, output is going to start to go down. Uh, the grid current is about 200 mils. Um, I need to change that. So I'm going to up the drive just a bit and uh, retune. I, what I want to do is keep the grid current uh, in the range of a couple hundred milliamps and um, go for max out. So the grid current now is about 
200 milliamps and the plate current's coming up to about six or seven hundred. So each time I tune I'm going to increase the drive just a bit and uh, knowing that the low control is also going to have to go up. All right. Uh, the last part of this video is about jumping to conclusions. So I open up the amp, take the old tubes out, and one of them is cracked. Uh, my first thought was, well, I've done a, a lousy job soldering the pin uh, that carries the filament current. Put the new tubes in, they fit fine. Um, one pin is slightly separate from the other three and you can figure out where the tube belongs in the socket so and I think that is the good one so um, put everything together close it all up turn it on and nothing's connected to it except the uh, PTT line Press the button on the PTT line to get it to go into transmit mode. And there's no idling current. So I'm messing with it. I flipped to high voltage to see if that made any difference, uh, which is just taking a stab at something. Nothing happened. I'm keying it again, and the power supply pops. There's a, a roughly 8 tenths of an ohm resistor. It blew up meaning it handled more current than it should. So, why did that resistor blow? I put in the two tubes. Was it the two tubes? Because that's the only thing that changed, right? <clears throat> so I disconnect everything. I take the tubes out. <clears throat> I open up the amp. I flip it over and nosing around on the inside. And I'm trying to figure out why there would be no idling current. Um, I have a bias supply, yeah, which is a string of diodes, so I'm messing with that son of a gun. One of those diodes broke loose from the next one in the chain. They were in a, a piece of heat shrink. So that explained to me why I had no island current, because I had no connection to the cathode of the tube, tubes. So I'm build another string of diodes, put them in the amplifier, put the cover back on, put the screws in, turn upside down, put the cover on, put the screws in, key it again, same thing. Uh, what the heck? The only thing I've changed now is the two tubes. Well, that's not true. I changed the string of diodes. So I get the diodes out, I, out, I desolder them and get them out, put them on the desk. I'm checking them with a meter and one or two don't check quite right and it turns out that the housing of one of the diodes, the wire had broken off right sheer flush with the housing and it was laying in the chassis and I thought, what is the chance of that happening? <clears throat> so I make that repair and I'm checking the rest of the diodes and another one tests shorted. So when I took them out of the, the bin where I keep my diodes, that was a bad diode. And I didn't know it, no point in keeping a bad diode, so it ended up in the trash. But it was shorted. So um, jumping to conclusions, it still doesn't work. I make the repairs, it still doesn't work. Uh, what the heck can it be? Talk to my friend David, see if he had any ideas. There was 6 DGH, and um, he suggested I take another look at the diodes. And so I did, and I decided to just chuck them in the, in the bin, the trash, and I found a Zener diode in a drawer, stuck that in the amplifier, and got island current. I did have to replace the resistor in the uh, 
uh, power supply, which is a bit of a job because the power supply is off on a corner behind some other stuff. Another thing I had to do was uh, when I was looking at the tubes and I saw the crack in the tube was jumping to conclusion was may maybe it was my solder connection to the pins. Turns out it wasn't. Uh, the blower was bad, so I had to take the blower out, which is a job because it's not meant to be taken out. I mean, I had to move stuff aside to get it out, put the new one in. That new one makes a bunch of noise. So I spend hours trying to get the noise down because I can't move the wheel on the shaft. It's, it's locked in. Finally, I get that working, put the cover on, and everything works fine. So I tune up the amp. At one point, I'm getting 1,500 watts out, which is about as much as I would expect from a, a pair of new tubes. <clears throat> so, if you buy something like that and you're going to fix it, don't jump to conclusions that the replacement part is bad. It may be something else you touched or bumped or uh, got solder on. It's amazing the number of things that can go wrong. And that amplifier... To get it running took about a week, uh, and I mean hours and hours and hours and hours. At one point I was thinking, do I need to just part this thing out and call it quits? No, I don't. It still needs some work, but it's still a, a good amp with a, P a Peter Dahl transformer. <clears throat> anyway, if you would like to support this channel, there's a way to do that in the description through Patreon. Um, if you have not subscribed, please do that. We're that close to 50,000. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you have. Give me a thumbs down if you haven't. And if you would like to make a comment, that would be great. I'm Jim, your YouTube Elmer, saying 73. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Hopefully it won't be as complicated as that amp. See you later.